to start recording this also. Yeah, okay. So this recording will be in your um, Teams uh, uh, chat log as well. And then I'm also uploading it to your uh, course website under lecture videos. All right. So this will go in as number two today once I finish the recording and we finish the class. Okay. So uh, what did it say? Uh, you are recording. Your, yeah. Okay. All right. So the second point on the agenda is this. Uh, now, this project versus ideal sequence. Okay. This is sequence. Now, what is the point I'm trying to make here? Now, one of the things you'll notice as we go through this course, okay, and it is your duty to uh, inform me whenever you have any kind of problem, any kind of problem accessing the notes, or if you read some note and you don't understand what we are saying there, uh, okay, like uh, we have one where I've not yet prepared the video, functions of financial markets. If you're reading something and you don't understand this price discovery, I didn't understand what this stuff is, it's your responsibility to ask me the question, okay? Otherwise, I will not be able to figure out who's got a problem where because there are too many students. So you have to be proactive and any problem you have, if you feel this is not properly written, that's why these are kept as dynamic notes. So I didn't understand this price discovery. Okay, then based on your input, I may add a few more lines. Okay, so uh, I may write it a little better. I, I may I try to explain it a little better. So it is your responsibility to keep on uh, giving me feedback about what you don't understand uh, so I can explain it or I can improve the notes all right so you have to be proactive about that okay now what would happen typically is we'll take this out okay so what would happen typically ideally is that uh, we would first go through this is the sequence of topics you see over here this is actually how we should normally introduce these topics okay these are not topics you would find it generally in any finance textbook because uh, they are usually written by academics and this is my own perspective based on my market experience and I, this is what I think that people should learn when they, have, when they have to transact in financial markets when they, and pretty much every finance role requires that. So this is a different kind of uh, con uh, you know, content but this is how I would ideally teach it and this is a sequence okay but unfortunately we do not have the luxury of time because we have to finish this project and we have only two months and uh, so therefore what I would ideally what I would do is first I would go through the entire sequence because this is a logical flow of topics I would finish everything and then I would start on the project but unfortunately we can't operate in the ideal world okay so the project uh, project in the driven sequence versus the ideal sequence so we can't you uh, follow the ideal sequence that's why you see I'm jumping straight away into the project brief okay the, and the project brief is because you have to do this project. So I have to give you some specific skills which are required just to do the project, which is why the other day we had this. We discussed all these kinds of, uh, uh, you know, issues because uh, we have to get, I have to get you guys quickly into the project mode so that you can actually have some basic skills to do your project in a sensible way, right? Now, even after I give you a project brief, you may still find that I'm not able to figure out what's going on uh, and I'm feeling like I'm just being thrown in the water. I have not been taught how to swim. Okay. And that is going to happen. Okay. The idea here is that you will be looking at all these, you'll have to track all these markets, right? And uh, you will be uh, quite lost because you have not done this before and I have not had the time to really teach you everything. So we'll be learning as, so basically I'm going to throw you in the water and then while you're struggling in the water, I will be teaching you how to swim. All right. So it's going to feel like that, that this is not. Uh, so if it feels like that, don't be surprised. It is natural. And uh, this is one of the problems we have because we have we don't have time. OK, as I said, we have an ideal sequence, but we don't have the uh, luxury of following the ideal sequence. So please understand this when you are feeling when you're going to feel like I don't have the skill set to do this project. That's OK. You will learn as you go. All right. This is meant to be a learning process, uh, so you should feel free to make mistakes and just do your project sincerely. All right, so let's uh, look at, uh, let's get into the, okay, so let's get into the uh, actual project brief, uh, continue with the actual project brief. So let me just, uh, this you'll notice that in your uh, folder, okay, in your folder here under students, now you have all these things you have now you have the notes and then you have I put in a separate folder called project 
All right, there's this spreadsheet over here, which I've opened over here. All right, the IPM20. Now, what is this? Uh, this is, remember last, in the last uh, meeting, we had discussed that I would give you a bunch of tickers, all right? The universe of stocks that you're going to trade. So these are your tickers. Mainly what you're concerned is with the one in the top set, okay? Not the bottom set, the top set. Uh, this part. The bottom set, I'll explain what that is, all right? Now, how did we, uh, so this is basically what you're going to be trading, which means I, I wanted to give you some kind of structure so that, you know, you look at all these, uh, if you look at, uh, we'll just, if you look at markets, uh, if you look at stocks, if you look at most active stocks, okay, you have 203 results here, okay. Now the question is, it can be a little confusing, which stocks should I choose, right? So in order to help you to give, to help to give you some structure, I have given you a set of stocks and uh, one of the things we have, so it can become very confusing because there are thousands of stocks that are listed. So I will just, uh, I have given you a set of stocks, right, which is, which is the universe from, which means now in this project, you can only trade these stocks. Let me put this in some kind of special highlight. Um, I'll explain what that other one is. Uh, which one, which color should I? All right. Okay. Uh, so this uh, here, you have this stuff in green. These are the tickers. So which means you cannot go outside this list. So some of your big favorite companies like Google, Amazon, etc., or Facebook are out of this uh, list. They are not in this list. There is a reason for that, and that their stocks are quite high priced. And we'll come to that discussion of why I've left out the stocks. Uh, that uh, th those stocks. And so what we'll get into first is the um, discussion on how I arrived at this list okay and that will give you some kind of idea sorry before that uh, okay yeah Vipul's question we have already answered so uh, okay so let's get into this question of how did we arrive at this uh, set of stocks all right so let's look at this problem initially so let's look at the project brief okay now we are going to do the project brief Lot of a discussion on the project brief. Okay, so um, right. So you are given a certain amount of money. Okay, you are given a certain amount of money. Are given to you a certain amount of money is given to you by an investor. Now, so the first question you have, we are going to move a little bit. Actually, what we are covering uh, today, uh, as I said, this is not going to be in sequence because we don't have the luxury of going in sequence. What we are actually covering is over here, okay? Uh, so perhaps you could read this note later on after the class. I'll give you a very quick rundown, okay? So um, what we are covering is basically this part, the asset classes, markets, and instruments at this point of time. So this discussion right now, okay. So when you're given a, a set of investable funds and the other thing I'm going to do today, okay. So one of the things you have to do is now you have given this money by an investor and you're told, okay, invest this money for me, all right? So what are some of the questions that go through your mind? You know, which, you know, how do you think about investing this money? Let's ask somebody, let's ask Sambhavna. What will you do if somebody gives you, let's say in this case, 1 million, okay, this is how we write million in from the foreign exchange markets uh, uh, jargon, okay, in the foreign exchange markets we write million as MIO, MIO, okay. So Samhavna, can you tell us uh, what would you, what would be a, what would your thinking be like if you're given investable funds of 1 million by an investor and he doesn't give you any kind of uh, uh, re uh, sort of constraint, he says, okay, go and invest this money for me, now where will you go, where will you go and put this money? How will you think about where to put it? Uh, so, uh, can I invest in any kind of assets? Okay, one minute. Let's do one thing now. Let me just, uh, as she's making her comments, uh, in the notes master, 
Oh no, I put it in the IPM calc file. Okay, in the calc file, I have created uh, this. Uh, this is going to be your spreadsheet equivalent of this file. Okay, so here we, as we use this as our running notes from day to day, and here we are going to use it like a board. Okay, you guys are already noticing some of the other teachers are using whiteboards and stuff like that. Now I am going to be using this spreadsheet and this note as a whiteboard essentially. Okay, this is where we are writing down stuff. So you can access it later on. The way this is going to be structured, this is going to be in your calc file, which you can launch from here. Okay, this is your calc file. In the calc file, there'll be a session calc spreadsheet. So this is here. Okay, so here's where we are going to start putting up her answers. Okay, maybe put up this point here. All right. So we have this discussion about investable funds. Okay. So what is somebody uh, Sambhavna saying is she's going to put it in some asset. Which asset? Um, the real estate mutual funds. Okay. Real estate and mutual funds. Okay. One minute. Asset. She's talking about real estate. Okay. Mutual funds. All right. Okay. Let's ask uh, Saloni. What else? You have any other ideas? You want to add to what uh, Sambhavna is saying? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, Saloni, yes. What happened? We can't hear her. What? You have an audio problem or you have a thinking problem? Sir, I am thinking. <laughs> okay, thank right, you. Right. Okay, while she's thinking, okay, let's ask Jakar. Jakar, you have still not responded with your ID and password, by the way. What happened to Jakar? He's not present. Sir, he's not on the call. Okay, he's not on the call. Okay. okay. We have a lot of people with their hands raised. So uh, I should ask all these people. Okay. All right, let's ask Harsh. Yes, Harsh, what is your point? Sir, if I have one million dollars, yeah, sir, in that case, first I will invest in government saving schemes that are provided by the post office. So I will invest. About, okay, so you're talking yes. about safe assets. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Safe right. assets. Okay. Sir, first I will invest in these bonds and debentures that are issued by government companies. Okay, and so safe assets essentially that means generally when we talk about safe assets, what do we talk about in finance? We are talking about uh, what we call sovereign debt. Government debt, okay? Yes, okay. sir, government debt. Okay, all right, okay. Then anything else? Mm, sir, I'll buy shares of some company, those who are doing good. Okay, some shares, so the shares are essentially equities. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, sir. All right. Okay. So, uh, all right. Okay. Let's go through some of the other people who had raised their hands. Uh, Rish Rag. Yes, Rag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, sir I will also I invest will in the equity market, market but like but first, like, I will invest some of the mountain large cap stocks and, and uh, uh, some uh, I will keep I for will regular keep trading, trading, intraday trading, and, and some amount I will keep I will for keep like for if there is an IPO or something, I will keep some amount reserved for that, so that I can invest in that when the time comes. Large cap IPO. Uh, okay, intraday. Okay, fine. These are all terms that we are using. Both we have to uh, clarify these terms. These are actually not mutually exclusive. Some of the terms that you are using, so we have to be careful about that. Okay, so uh, we'll ask now. What we'll do is uh, we will instead of asking so many people, I'll, I'll come to you guys. Keep your hands raised. What's up, Aman? Um, then uh, uh, Vipul and uh, Sachin. Just unless you have a specific question which is confusing to you. If you just want to answer this question, I'll come to you for uh, in the future. Okay, uh, just just keep your. Um, I think if I what happens is if I I can actually move this to this side, and then I can monitor you guys here without having to interrupt the screen display. All right, let's hope this thing works because I've got two screens, so I can. There's one screen on which I keep uh, the windows which I'm experimenting with, and the other screen where I. 
show you uh, whatever we are discussing as our uh, display. All right. So we have written down some stuff. Now I'll just quickly because I need to cut down the time as well. We can't spend too much time on one question. The first thing that you have to think about now uh, these things are all as I said uh, these are all uh, discussed in this uh, part of the note number section 5 actually uh, which is asset classes you will get some perspective from reading that okay. Uh, so we asked this question about investable funds and we got this kind of a, 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 a few answers from your batch mates. Right now, uh, what do we? The way we think about it, ideally, I'll just give you a quick rundown, and later on we'll go through this in greater detail when we get into the decision problems. Uh, but right now, my goal is to quickly set you up for the project. Okay, so the way you have to think about this, if you notice some of the things that we said, now Sambhava mentioned uh, real estate. Now she mentioned mutual funds, which is actually you can also have mutual funds that focus on real estate. So uh, therefore, these are not mutually exclusive. All right. So uh, now sh here large cap IPOs intraday okay these are also not strictly speaking uh, mutually exclusive because you can do intraday trading in large cap stocks right. So therefore these are not mutually exclusive so one of the things you guys have to remember as you're learning okay is your when you're doing a le uh, when you're learning as uh, general principles of learning that you have to always talk in terms of mutually exclusive uh, categories there is also a you remember we had this session on tax taxonomy in lab. You guys remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. yeah. So, yes, uh, sir. yeah. So always. Uh, so, so just to give you an example, I mean, not to criticize. When I'm giving you inputs, I'm not criticizing what students are saying. I'm just trying to show you how you have improved your. You can improve your thinking. So I'll just take the example that I mean. So two examples is Sambhavna's example and Rag's example. Both of them have given categories which are not mutually exclusive because you can do large cap trading in intraday stocks. Uh, you can do intraday trading in large cap stocks. You can also. Sir, have can I clarify one thing? thing? Yes. Sir, yes. what I meant by large cap was large cap for long term investment and mid cap and small cap for intraday. Okay, fine. In that case, fine. You're clarifying it. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. So, anyway, the lesson is I still want to hammer home the lesson. Uh, uh, that you have to always talk in terms of mutually exclusive categories, okay? So uh, that you should remember always because the, actually this is a common mistake that you'll find even people in industry make, a lot of people make this mistake, but uh, this forces you to think in a highly structured manner, all right? So always remember this, uh, the principles of taxonomy that I taught you in lab, that your category, one of those principles that your categories, whenever you give a cat set of categories, they must be mutually exclusive, all right? So let's just look at one of these frameworks which you will find in your notes when you go to the asset classes section. So the right way to think about it actually when you are given this amount of money first, investable funds, the right way to think about it is that you have to think about in terms of asset classes. All right. If you have uh, asset classes, I'll just try to uh, bring up asset classes. So we'll go through this in uh, detail later on. I'll just try to run through it quickly today so that uh, we don't lose too much time, right? The way you think about it, I'm just giving you a quick rundown and then we'll come to, uh, let's look at futures here. Right, now asset classes essentially is uh, a category of markets. We'll have to reduce this a little bit, all right? So the way we do asset classes is there are basically uh, five major asset classes, which I have defined here. Okay, in this framework, uh, you will be able to launch this framework from your notes. Okay, so uh, in this framework, we have talked about five major asset classes. Uh, asset class essentially is just a a set of markets which are going to be moving together uh, in general. All right. So if you have currencies, then when you're looking at currency markets, they tend to move in uh, generally. They tend to be influenced in the same way by the same factors. Uh, and they move a little differently from the commodity markets, from the equity markets, from the debt markets. So historically, these were the four major asset classes, currencies, commodities, equities, and debt. But now we have, since the financial crisis of 2007-8, we have a uh, other important emerging asset class, which is real estate, because it started behaving differently uh, from the other asset classes. So we, have, we can talk about five major asset classes. These are the major asset classes. So the way we think about it when we get some money to invest is the first question you have to ask yourself is which asset class are we going to invest in? Okay, let me put this in the type, uh, right? So I'm just going to give you the um, 
which asset class are we going to invest in? Right. So if you talk about asset, see, when you look at a bunch of markets, okay, if you can see here in this, I don't know if you guys can read. Can you read this stuff like this is cocoa without my highlighting? Can you read next to cocoa is cotton, then there's orange juice? Are you able to read the notes? I mean, are you able to read the names? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So this, when you see a bunch of uh, markets like this, it's very difficult to kind of uh, make sense of them. So one of the things you do is you make a, you do a taxonomy. Okay. Now this is a taxonomy of markets, asset classes. That's why this is called taxonomy and perspective. So you group them into asset classes. Okay. So you have currencies, commodities, equities, etc. So for instance, when you look at uh, yeah, this, so where will natural gas go? Which asset class will natural gas be in? Commodities. 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 Correct. And commodities. Excellent. Excellent. So natural gas will go into commodities. Okay. Then if you are looking at the NASDAQ 100, where will that go? Here. NASDAQ 100. Stock. Discuss. Yes. Equities. Equities. Correct. Equity. So NASDAQ 100, I taught you last time that this is a uh, major tech, tech, tech yeah. index. Okay. We discussed, I showed you how the NASDAQ 100 is already at new highs. All right. For after the coronavirus, because so many tech stocks, the uh, take up for the NASDAQ 100 is, uh, the, is uh, if we just look at say five years, you can see it's all time highs. Okay. This is the coronavirus the COVID-19 sell-off and this is already at all-time highs all right so okay everybody has to mute somebody is not on mute who is not on mute okay it is uh, okay I think it was Rag who was not on mute maybe I'm not sure okay all right so uh, yeah no it's just that uh, I when I scroll through okay uh, all right so um, this is NASDAQ so this is the NASDAQ is going to be going into equities so this is how you look at markets. When you look at a whole bunch of markets, you feel a little confused. And one of the helps, uh, one of the benefits of having a taxonomy is that it helps you to group markets together into uh, group markets into categories, and then that gives you some better sense of perspective. All right. So, for instance, if you go into currency, if you go into say euro or yen, okay, or sterling, these would go into which asset class here? Currency. They would go into currency. Currency. Okay, so you can straight away see the value of having a taxonomy and this kind of a framework that it helps you to make sense of when you're looking at so many markets, you can make a little bit more, you can uh, get a little bit more clarity by grouping it into, car, uh, to, into asset classes. So the first decision that you have to take is when you're given some money and the investor doesn't give you any constraints, says you do whatever you want, just invest this money for me. So you have to take a decision about which asset class am I going to go into? Is this point clear to everyone? Have you understood this point? I'm going to introduce this term. We are already doing the decision problems. I'm going to introduce this term. Although we are going to handle it in more details later. Everybody understands what a decision problem is? Yes? Everybody? I think I gave you this example. If you are going to have, if you're going to have lunch and you can only have one dish, now, whether you want to have masala dosa or you want to have pizza or you want to have uh, a, a roll or something, these are all, this is a decision problem because if you have the dosa, then you can't have the pizza, right? So you need to make a decision and you, uh, let's say you have only a limited amount of money. So if you put it into some kind of, it's a uh, resource allocation problem and these are usually mutual, uh, you know, it, we can define it as a... All right, so we can, a decision problem is a, uh, let's say define it, you need to choose a decision that 
there is a problem of uh, scarce or limited resources very much like what you learned in economics okay you might have you might be familiar so you have scarce or limited resources you need to choose a decision scarce or limited allocate allocate to um, mutually exclusive Users. Okay, so in the lunch example that I gave you, you have a limited amount of money, you have limited tiffin money for lunch, and then you have to either use it to buy pizza, or you use it to buy dosa, or you use it to buy a roll, or lasagna, or whatever. But if you buy the lasagna, then you can't have the pizza, right? So this is what I mean by mutually exclusive, and you have limited resources, so you need to now you have a problem, which one should I choose? Is everyone clear now what a decision problem is? Okay, we've just come up with a formal definition of a decision problem, uh, but we are going to be dealing, and this is what we are handling right now. We are handling the decision problem. When the, uh, and, uh, when, so just a little note, guys, uh, because we have a lot of material to cover, okay, uh, you may notice that uh, in the finance course, I may not be as, uh, like I gave you some, some opportunity to ask questions earlier, to, to give inputs earlier, okay, which we noted down here. Uh, but I may not be uh, asking you that many questions and it may more it may be a little bit more like a lecture tutorial kind of a uh, style of teaching uh, Because this is because we have a lot of material to cover. Okay, so we are treating you like adults uh, You are all here to learn because companies will not hire you unless you've learned something So it is your responsibility, but I will always answer questions This is a golden rule that I always follow that any question, like you remember last time, Vipul and others were asking a lot of questions and I answered all the questions. So I never uh, decline a question. At the most, I might postpone it to another session. So this is quite, this is not always ha the case, okay? Even in IIM Ahmedabad, we had some professors who would not answer student questions. They would just say, okay, we'll do it later and then it would never get addressed. But they wanted to teach what they had come prepared to teach. So this is a particular uh, this is a, this is also a style of part of the style of teaching. So in my philosophy of teaching, the student questions are always the most important. That's why you're here in class. So any question you ask, I will answer it. So therefore, it is your responsibility as adult learners to uh, you know any time you have any doubt, like uh, you'll notice Vipul asks a lot of questions, which is very good. So uh, any time you have any doubt, you should ask a question. You have some thought. I want to add some point here. You can ask a question. Okay. Now, Sachin has his hand up. We'll ask, check with Sachin. Sachin, yes, anything you want to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You just you given, given us uh, some, some stocks. stocks. These, These all, all stocks, stocks are, are stocks, stocks or some stocks are um, uh, just, just like some stocks, stocks, stocks uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, some, some stocks, stocks are crude, crude or uh, something uh, else. Yeah, all these are stocks, stocks, normal investing stocks. stocks. No, this is this stuff that I'm, uh, can, can you guys see the coloring here? Can you see that this stuff is in green background? Can you see that? Is the color coming through? Yes, Sachin, can you see yes, the no, sir. No, sir. green color? Green yes, color, yes, sir. Yeah, you can see green, right? Okay, good. Because sometimes yes. in the projector in the class, we would have a problem with the color. Like yes. I would be seeing green and you would see blue and all this stuff. Okay. No, no, no. So uh, anyway, so the answer, short answer to Sachin's question, actually I'm coming to our, the answer, but the short answer to Sachin's question is they are all equities. They are all equities, they are, yes, sir. Yeah, they are all equities because this is a particular equity trading project, but I was trying to come to this question in a you know as you notice my answers are always everywhere my answers are very long okay? you ask a short question i give you long answers that's because i want to make sure that you understand the entire context of the answer because this is not physics finance is not physics where the answers can be very precise but here uh, you have to understand the entire context so that's why i give you long answers so short answer to sachin's question was that uh, whether these are all equities or these are some of these are commodities or some are currencies. No, answer is no. All of these are equities, okay? These are all individual exactly. stocks, common stocks of individual companies. These are all the tickers. You're talking about 33 tickers, total 33 tickers. So yes, I was going to explain how I came here. That's why I started with uh, the basic question and the basic decision problem of asset class, okay? Yes, all right. sir. Okay, does that answer your question, Sachin? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Exactly. okay. And also on questions, prior, remember for my teaching philosophy, answering student questions is the number one priority. So, and when, for instance, I have answered such a question. Now, if he is not happy with the answer, 
he should ask he should ask you know i didn't understand this part but or he should say that you know no actually what i was asking is something else like for instance when i gave input on rags uh, uh, points then rag clarified that i what i meant was that large cap is for in long term investment and uh, mid cap small cap is for intraday now you you should do that okay that's what it is all about so basically the whole thing so answering student questions that are priority so you have to make use of that benefit as i told you even in i am ahmedabad we did not get that facility from uh, some quite a few of the professors so make use of the uh, the facility that i'm giving you by answering all student questions okay so it, uh, but at the same time i will tend to be in a lecture mode so that i can cover more material because otherwise if i go through the whole class asking okay abha tell me what do you think aman tell me what do you think bhavya tell me what do you think then we will be just listening to inputs on one question for the whole session okay so uh, that i hope you guys understand uh, what i am talking about here i am talking about why i am trying to do it in lecture form so i can cover more material okay is that clear yes sir right. okay good all right okay so um where were we okay here we were here so the first uh, decision you have to take when the investor gives you this money uh the reason i'm saying 1 million is this 1 million is actually the money that you have in the ibgws paper trading account okay they're not giving you 100 million they're giving you only 1 million thank you okay. what happened there's some echo coming from somewhere i don't know where okay uh all right so the first decision is which asset class do i invest this money in okay currencies commodities equities debt real estate these are all asset classes all right so uh, the in that in that i mean as far as that decision problem is concerned we have chosen equities okay for this project we have chosen equities so i i want to lead you to this set of uh, markets uh, by showing you how the uh, you know formal decision problems are being solved so the most fundamental question is which asset class should i invest in you can invest in more than one also there's no uh, you don't have to necessarily be confined to one asset class okay there are certain styles of trading in 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 the alternative asset management uh, universe like in hedge funds uh you have certain styles called global macro where they trade in currencies they trade in equity big index indices they trade in debt they trade in commodities so you don't have to the point i'm trying to answer uh, to clarify here is when you are making this decision prop when you're solving this decision problem on asset class uh you don't have to we can perhaps make it es you can also decide which asset classes not just one asset class it's uh, in this particular project we have chosen one asset class but uh you can in general choose anything you want any number of asset classes right okay the second decision that you have to take is when you uh, when you look at uh, okay now let's say we have chosen equities right so we'll come to this uh, instrument part later let's say we have chosen equities so we have gone into this row we have gone into this row all right and when we look at the universe of equities let's look at uh, i hope that this site was also giving me problems earlier um Okay, so let's look at this. When I look at equities, I look at I go to Yahoo Finance. I see the most active stocks. All right. So just looking at the most active stocks. Now you see a problem here. Let's look at the heat map view and see what it's like. Or we can look at the heat map here. Uh, let's look at the maps here. This thing, this display is called a heat map. Okay. Have you heard this term before? We are discussing this term, so let's talk about this. all types of jargon and technical terms which we discuss we are going to uh, make sure we make a note of it so that you are alerted to the fact that okay this is a technical term that we have discussed we should know what it is all right so um, let me just say here yeah okay i'm going to put this link in your notes so that this is a heat map right this is called a heat map why is it called a heat map because it's trying to show the uh, it's trying to give you a visual picture of uh, you know uh, which stocks have gone up which stocks have gone down all right so you can see the code over here i don't know if you can see it here but if you notice here can you see this minus 3% 1% 2% 3% 4% 5% 6% 7% 8% 9% 10% 11% 12% 13% 14% 15% 16% 17% 18% 19% 20% 21% 22% 23% 24% 
this is based on a period okay which is one day performance so minus three percent means there will be deep red little bit less red means minus two percent and little bit less red even less red is minus one percent similarly then here you have plus three percent uh, plus two percent and so the green uh, you understand the idea right very bright green one minute i'm going into view. ignore the background noise all right so this is what we want to understand in the heat map so this is very 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 bright means if you look at this Costco which is I think one of your stocks okay Costco is very bright green so uh, this is a big discount score in the US very big discount store okay uh, so this Costco is up at least three percent more than three percent so you can see it's in bright green okay the other stuff which is like Amazon is less than one is less than one percent so therefore it is uh, deep green this is what a heat map is okay so everybody gets the idea about the heat map is this clear to everyone it's a visual way of displaying uh, your uh, overall stock market information everyone clear about the heat map yes guys Akshita, are you clear uh, on this? Uh, yes somebody has a question has a question who has a question uh, sir, with me. Sorry, I, I, Hello? I yes, yes. Sir, we put this side. Yeah, we put, tell me, what are the questions? Uh, sir, this is sectorial distribution. Yes, sir, what distribution? Uh, sir, uh, different sectors like... Uh... Yes, yes, so they have mentioned the sectors as well, but the, uh, the idea is that if your question is that the heat map need not, you can also have a heat map by sector, okay? But this is actually not a heat map by sector this is a heat map by individual stock all right it is showing you the individual stocks so it's a heat map like apple is an individual stock okay it is uh, microsoft is an individual stock verizon is a uh, this visa actually the verizon is vz visa is an individual stock i understand why uh, people ask this question about sectoral distribution because he is looking at when i put up visa it says financial credit services so these are sectors like Apple, it says technology, consumer electronics. These are sectors, industry sectors. So that's why he asked the question. Am I right, Vipul? That's why you asked, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So, but uh, the answer to your question is no. This is not a sectoral distribution heat map, but the sectoral information is provided as an addendum when we highlight the stocks. But this is actually a stock based heat map, individual stock based. All right. So the point of showing this heat map was, what, what was my point? I was coming to the second decision problem. Now I have already decided that I'm going into equities as far as asset class is concerned. But when I go to this uh, group, uh, to the heat map, and I see the, all these stocks, look at the number of stocks. I see so many stocks, all right? So I get confused. I mean, look at these number of stocks. Look, when I go to the most actives, or let me just, let this heat map view is not very, Let's look at the listing view that is better. I look at the most active stocks and I see, oh my God, there are 203 stocks. Which one should I buy? Or which one should I, which one should I even follow? Forget about buy or sell. Which one should I follow? So it's very confusing. So the second decision that I have to take is, let's call this DP. One. DP is for decision problem, okay? Now, we actually are discussing the heat map in the context of DP2. So the second decision problem is which markets, all right? Now, unfortunately, I have not had time to go through your discussion of markets also. This is the problem that we have because we have so little time. 
actually we are supposed to go through a discussion of markets but hopefully you guys have read some of the notes if you see the notes we have defined uh, markets as okay under financial market functions of financial markets we have uh, okay defined financial market you have to go through these notes on your own later on okay make sure you go through the introductory notes okay these introductory notes are you can always follow the sequence but we have to skip through quickly a little. I mean, it's not that you don't need to know this but it will take you time to go it will take me time to go through these topics uh, but if you go through all these topics in the right sequence then it comes to the asset classes but you may have to read this earlier a little bit because of the way that we are doing the project related information okay once again if you have any confusion i am not able to follow this i didn't follow why this goes after this or this comes before this it is your responsibility to ask me with any con any confusion and i told you i don't put any restriction on questions i put a high priority on answering student questions so you should have no compu compunctions about asking questions should not have any hesitation that i will not like this question or anything like that any question can be asked so it is your responsibility you have any confusion you must ask me okay otherwise i will not know that you have a problem and then i will clarify it okay so the markets we are coming to the second question is which markets have i decided i've decided equity but when i go to equities and i start looking at this i get very oh my god look at the number of stocks there's so many stocks which one should i follow okay uh, here also i see 203 stocks i'm very confused now which one should i choose okay which ones which stock should i even follow right so these are all markets okay individually these are all markets and i'll come to the definition that if you read your introductory notes, you'll find that we have defined financial markets as venues to exchange assets. All right. And essentially a market is a, this is not the right note to pick up actually. Um, we have defined it in the first note itself. The definitions of markets, I'm launching the first note. So we need to quickly recap our definition of markets. Okay, so let's look at the second definition first. This is the second. Uh, the second definition is a market is a venue for exchanging two assets for one another. It's a very technical definition. So a market is a venue for exchanging two assets for one another. Okay, a venue for exchanging assets. And then, then we further define refine this into the third definition, which is the working definition. Is a market is a venue, physical, virtual, for exchanging money for some type of asset. Okay. So remember this definition. Don't memorize it, but just try to understand it. Okay. Understand the logic. So uh, there's a logical sequence to these notes. Everything is logical. So please try to understand things from a logical point of view. Uh, and if you have any questions, you must ask me. But do not memorize. Okay. Memorizing will not help help you in life. So you must understand it conceptually. Understand the logic. So we are looking at mark financial markets. Essentially, you'll be looking at all financial markets will be a value for exchanging some asset for money okay there will be money on one side and there will be some type of asset on one side okay so here if we take this definition here and apply it here you will see that these are all markets you see this this microsoft okay this price of microsoft 213 what is this 213 what does this mean one common stock of microsoft is worth 213 what indian rupees Okay, yes, Rajat. Let's ask Rajat RJ, radio jockey. What is this? Yes, 213 sir, sir. is what? Indian rupees? Sir, ask, uh, single, single price, price single for a single, single share. share. No, no, single price, yeah, but what? It is Indian rupees. 213 Indian rupees. Yes, sir, we are operating in US market, market. now. So, so, it is in dollars. dollars. Okay, correct. So, now Rajat has given us the uh, definition, has given us the application of the definition to this particular market. Now understand this, this is a market. This is a market for Microsoft common stock. Why is it a market? Match it with our definition. Okay. Defin on the one side, we have one asset, which is common stock of Microsoft. On the other side, as Rajat has clarified, 
the other side is US dollars, right? You are exchanging Microsoft common stock for US dollars. Okay, this is the first our recap of our first concept of markets. Is everyone clear about this? This is a market for the common stock of Microsoft. What are the two assets? Because it's a market, this must be a venue for exchanging assets and in generally we will have asset on one side, some type of asset on one side and money on the other side. Here what you have is Microsoft common stock and US dollars on the other side. Is this clear to everybody? Yes? Everyone is clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Excellent. So this is how we are going yes, to understand sir. markets. And now this is why I say that when I look at this heat map of the S&P 500 stocks, look at the number of stocks I see here. There are 500 stocks. I'm very confused. Okay. Which one should I follow? I can't follow 500 stocks. So this is where we need to do a further fine tuning because remember, I'm going, we are going through the problems that we gave initially to Sambhavna that the uh, investor has given her $1 million. Uh, now she has to, he didn't put any constraints. Now she has to put some constraints on herself. Otherwise she will go crazy. Because if you look at all these asset classes, just in equities, just in US equities, S&P 500 is US, US listed equities. Now imagine if I bring in, oh, I tell her that's, you know, oh, what about J Japanese equities? She goes to meet her friends and then some of, some of them tell her, no, why don't you invest in Japanese equities? And some of them tell her, no, no, invest in UK equities. Then some other person will tell her, go, go and invest in German equity. Then she'll become totally confused because there's so many markets to choose from. How are you going to filter? So the first filter that we have already applied to you is essentially under equities, we have applied markets. Okay, under markets, we have already started choosing. So we have chosen US equities. Okay, but we still have still have problems because if we choose S and P 500, we still have problems. Okay, uh, US equities, we still see too many stocks. Now we have to further cut this down. So now we come back to uh, Whipple's question when he was talking about sectoral distribution, okay? Now, how do we further fine tune this? This brings you to the question of how did I come up with these uh, stocks? This Sachin was asking us whether these are actually all equities. These are all equities, yes. But how did I come up with this stuff? And what does all this, what does all this mean? This BMCS, etc. okay? So this is how you do it. When you are an equity investor, okay? When you've decided to become an equity investor, you have to also choose which U.S. equities, Indian equities, uh, U.K. equities will be GB. Okay, if you notice uh, British uh, websites, if you go to British websites, it will be dot GB because of GBP is the currency symbol. So Indian equities will be dot IN. Then you can go to German websites; they will be dot DE because the Deutsche Mark symbol was DE. All right. So this was another problem that you had that uh, okay we are not listing it as a separate decision problem but within dp2 you have a separate problem when you're looking at equities or even other cl asset classes you have to now start looking at which countries markets okay us markets indian markets Brit uk markets german markets all right okay so you have this problem also but we have chosen us okay so i will put this stuff in uh, smaller type and I'll make it not bold. All right. So I've chosen. Is everyone clear about this? I've, cho I've just shown us that uh, I've just shown you here that you have to also decide which countries equities to look at and you could look at various countries. We can put dot 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 here. Dot 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 means you can go on and on like this, but we have chosen US equity. But even within US equity, we have this problem too many stocks. Now we come to the sectoral distribution. Okay. Now we come to the sectoral distribution. How did I come up with this? Now, here what we do is go in this under this. Um, let's put this link also in your notes. All right. This is what I'm looking at now. Okay, so if you go under Finviz, you go to groups, okay. Under groups, you will find this. Under groups, there are various tabs, okay. Under groups, you have to choose the overview tab, tab, okay. This shows you the major, are you guys able to read the, 
Uh, are you able to read? Let's ask double A. Can you read this number six as financial? Can you read this? Is the font big enough? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, yes, great. Sir. Okay, great. Excellent. So you will see now this is the sectoral uh, you know, classification of US equities. All right, the sectoral classification. Now, so let's mention this term sectoral classification. Now, since the US is such an important market, okay, the very important point I want to make this once here that, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially in the Indian business school pro uh, programs, they teach finance from an Indian perspective. Now that is, uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, playing tennis, being a professional tennis player and not playing in the Grand Slams. So India is a backwater of global finance because our policies are very socialistic. So this is not the right way to study finance. For marketing, we are studying from an Indian perspective, but not finance. So finance has to be studied from a US perspective, which is the biggest market in the world, most liquid markets. So it is your responsibility as a finance student to know what's going on in the US financial markets. So therefore, you should be familiar with this basic classification in the US markets. But in general, we need to get this idea of sectoral classification. This is a general principle, OK? So. Uh, this is a particular sectoral classification for the U.S. markets. Now, if you want to look at Indian equities, let's say somebody wants to later on become, Ava wants to become an equity analyst, okay? Then uh, she is sitting on the equity desk at IIFL, let's say, and then she is looking at classification of Indian equities. Then she may not see the exact same sectors, but the idea is that she will still remember the general principle, which is that I need to do a sectoral classification, okay? and sectoral and also industry, okay? You have industry and then you have sector, okay? There's some difference in the, uh, uh, in, you know, how you define sector and industry, but the idea is these terms, both these terms are used, okay? Uh, so uh, you have this, so the idea is that she, uh, she will have to remember that you have to do some kind, I have to do some kind of, uh, in, uh, you know, sectoral and industry classification. So she will look at all the Indian equities and then she'll do a sectoral and industry classification. And the particular sectors that she comes up with may be different from the ones over here in the US. There may be, maybe she will come up with eight sectors, not 11, okay? But that's not uh, so important. What is more important is the general principle is that when you're looking at the equities of any particular country or even the debt securities, you will have to do a sectoral and industry classification. Are you guys following what I'm saying here, Bhavya? Are you following what I'm saying here? General principles? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So understand because your learning has to be always in terms of general principles. Okay, you will have some specific learning also, but the general principles are more important. What you're learning here is that when I look at the equities of any country, if you're going to Japanese equities, I must do a sectoral and industry classification. That's what it is. Okay, so this, when you see these terms here, BM, CS, CC, etc. This is basically nothing but BM is basic material, CC is, uh, I don't know why, uh, CS is communication services, and consumer cyclical is CC. Okay, this is what it is. So these are your uh, sectors, and these are the individual equities within the sector. All right. So now uh, this is basically the, uh, the, the process. Okay, so this is why I have come up with these categories, and then I have stocks under these. I didn't want to give you too many stocks. So 33 is a good enough universe to track. So your eyes are going to be only on this universe in your uh, IPM trading project, all right? So now further, how did I select these individual equities? Because if you look at BM, let's just take a look at BM. I gave you only three stocks from BM. How did I come up with three stocks? Because if you do your own research, yes, any question? Okay, I thought somebody had a question, okay. All right, so if you click on BM, let's click on BM. We have 234 stocks. See, 234 stocks in BM. Alcoa, all these things, okay? All these companies. Now, how did I come up with only three stocks out of 234 in BM? Okay, so let's look at how I came up with that because um, I have given you only three stocks. But when you click on BM, you see that... Um, there are 234 stocks. So how did I come up with three stocks? So this is how we'll understand this, how I came up with this, uh, with this uh, class, uh, the short list of three stocks. 
Okay, before we do that, I will just go through one more problem here, which is, uh, we'll just briefly classify one more problem, which is a third problem, DP3. All right, DP3 is, Can you guys, uh, Gagan, can you tell me, if you look at this framework that I'm showing you now, I discussed two decision problems. We discussed, uh, first problem is which asset class, second problem is which markets. And if you look at this decision, this framework here, what do you think the third decision problem is? Can you guess, Gagan? Oh. Uh. Okay, never mind. Let's ask Gaurav. Gaurav? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you want to guess? Is my question clear? I am asking yes, you to guess the third decision problem in sequence that we should be discussing. By looking at this framework, I'm giving you a hint already. Uh, I said that you have to choose the asset class. Then when you go into equities as your asset class of choice, then you get very confused and you have to therefore take a decision on which individual markets to choose. That's why I came up with these individual markets under the sector classification. I've only given you three markets to look at for each sector. All right. But before we come to how I came up with those three markets, I'm asking you, is there any other question? Is there any other decision problem that we can think of at the initial stage that we have to choose? Sir, I Sir, think I which particular asset, asset to choose or how much to invest okay some that will also be a decision problem okay but let me give you a link uh, let me sir, give you a hint here that you see here when you're looking sir, at may some, I may? yes 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 sir, sir, instruments, sir, instruments, sir, instruments, sir, instruments. Yeah. i will come to aman later we'll, let's uh, okay what is what's saying sir the third problem decision problem would be type of instrument to invest in is cash spot future forward or swap correct correct okay so what sir has got it correct yeah what was what was aman saying sir uh, sector or industry so which one sector or industry okay all right so that yeah that was a, yeah that's a, that is also a question to decide okay but uh, i was actually asking about this one which is the one that uh, utsav had answered because I was pointing you to that, uh, the clue is like clue lies in uh, the okay. fact that I was pointing you to that framework. Okay. okay. Instruments again, instruments, because you could choose only one instrument, or you could choose many instruments. Okay. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at say for instance, uh, so where are we here? Okay. So if you look at if you are going to be a currency, if you're managing a currency fund, you could be investing in cash. But cash is not very actively traded. Uh, but spot is a very actively traded instrument, currency spot, biggest market in the world actually. Just for your information, 500 and uh, I think 513 or something like that. Some um, some huge amount of uh, trillion dollars a day. Okay. So sorry, not 500. Five, five trillion dollars, like 5.3 or 5.6 trillion dollars a day for the last survey that we had. So 5.6 trillion dollars a day. This is actually the biggest market in the world, the spot market for currencies. All right. Now, these are different types of instruments and instruments. If you see, if you see a sequence of notes, um, we are talking about uh, this is discussed over here. So you'll get some idea from contracts itself when you have transactions as contracts to exchange assets. I'll give you a brief idea at this point, which is that essentially what is an instrument? Again, as we will tackle all these de in, in greater detail later on. Those who have some remaining questions, you can always ask me or you can even clarify your own doubts by going ahead and reading through the notes because all the notes are ready. Okay, so you can read the notes and read. But generally, I'll just give you an idea. You're already familiar with contracts from your contract law sessions, right? So contract, remember a contract will have certain contract terms. Okay. So, uh, in this says uh, contract terms and those are negotiated between the parties. So essentially is the spot. What is the difference between spot futures, forward swaps, options? These are just think of these as different types of contracts. Okay. These are just different types of contracts. So therefore, since there are different types of contracts, they have 
different types of features. I mean, they have different types of terms. Okay, if you have a contract for uh, employment, okay, if you are hiring somebody at DSB, then he has a different type of contract terms. He has to come to office every day. He gets a fixed salary every month. But if we hire somebody to maybe do something for us where he gets a sales commission for something, then he may not have he may not have a basic salary. He may have only a sales commission, so he doesn't get paid unless he manages to sell something, right? So those are different types of contracts. So the terms are also different. So you can think of instruments. Uh, remember, these are instruments, okay? So uh, when you think of these, when you you might hear these terms, and when you hear these terms, you have to think of them as instruments. And these are instrument means these are just different types of contracts. A spot contract is different from this, from this, from this, from this. These are all different types of contracts. Okay, so the point that Utsav has made is correct. That the third major decision problem that we have is which type of instrument to choose. All right. Now in this project, as I said, we are not handling this uh, whole framework in detail right now. We are only handling. Uh, I'm trying to just quickly go through the decision problems. Uh, superficially, so that you have an understanding of how you came to this. Sir, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, you have put uh, futures and options as a different instrument. Yes. But they come on uh, one uh, derivative. Uh, uh, derivatives. Sir. Uh, future and options comes under derivative market, sir. So, sir, why you have put uh, it different, futures and options? No, in the sense that see, uh, let's put it this way. Let's say you are a P, you are a PGDM student. Now uh, you might have a buddy who is actually doing uh, BA LLB in VIPS. Okay. Now both of you will come under this. This is like the VIP students. You are let's say like a futures contract, and your buddy who is doing BBA LLB, BA LLB is a options under options, and you are under futures because this is PGDM. And then uh, your buddy doing B L L B is like being under options, but both of you are falling under derivative markets because both of you are VIPs. I mean, on the VIPs campus. If I say VIPs students, I mean people who are on the VIPs campus. Then uh, Vipul is a PGDM student, and his buddy is a B A L L B student, but they are both under the same category of VIPs students. So, does that answer your question, Vipul? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So your I want to understand when you said uh, futures and options are falling under derivatives. Are you? Uh, your question is uh, driven by this classification on my framework here, or is it driven by the normal uh, classification, the normal discussions we have in India about F and O segment derivatives and all futures and options? Are you being influenced by that discussion? The F and O segment discussion in the on uh, local TV and all that. Is that why you were asking? Yes, Vipul. Sir, you are uh, actually, sir, I uh, am not uh, listening to you properly. Sir, can you repeat? Okay, never mind. It's uh, it's not so important. But you have understood my answer to your question, right? Yes, sir. Because uh, sir, I think they uh, they are the same thing. Because uh, there is uh, equal uh, amount of risk involved in both the uh, future and option. Yeah. So that this is how right. uh, you you remember the example I gave you, right? Both yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. DSV and PGM are both. Uh, they are slightly different because they are st studying different subjects, but they are also same in the sense that they are both VIP students. So similarly, futures, forwards, swaps, and options. They are all different types of instruments, but there is a common feature. In that they are all derivative markets. Is this clear to everyone? This is how you read the framework. Okay. We will explain this framework. Okay. Yeah, this is we explain it little uh, in detail later on. Uh, but uh, these, this is what is how you are supposed to read the framework. Okay. So as Ulsa has clarified, the third decision problem we have to decide is because if we if we decide to do equities, so we decided to invest in equities, but that doesn't solve our problem because we still have to decide. What equity options, equity spot, or equity futures, forward swaps? Which one? So in that, for our project, we have chosen spot. Okay, and generally, this is the most popular instrument for trading equities. The most popular instruments for trading equities. Most popular is spot. This I'm talking about global standards. Uh, most popular is spot, and after that is uh, options. 
okay uh, in some countries like india we have equity futures also quite actively traded but uh, most popular generally if you look at global trends spot is the most popular and the next second most popular is options okay I just give example of fb options means this is an example of a market facebook options right so if you choose if you choose any company if you look you choose ford motor here if you choose the stocks of ford motor here you will choose if you go to yahoo finance you will see one of the options one of the alternatives given to you under ford motor company is you can look at the options of ford motor company so this 686 is the spot price okay this is the spot price for one uh, uh, common stock of ford motor so in this market market for ford motor common stock we call this remember the language okay remember the remember the structure of the language this is the market for ford motor company common stock the two assets in this market are common stock of ford motor company and nyse so therefore us dollars okay so therefore the other asset is us dollars so this is one uh, uh, one stock one common share of ford motor company you can buy it for 6.86 us dollars okay just recapping the definition of markets very important to understand it clearly because we are going to be using it all the time now you see this is the spot price but there are also many options if i choose an option very uh, much later further out okay let's choose september 18th option and then i can see that there are options trading if you see if we choose the straddle view in options so in your third project in i don't know whether it's going to be second or third fdrm project that will be on option trading that will be on trading equity options in this project you are trading on spot in this project in the ipm project you are trading uh, spot instruments on us equities when you go to your FDRM project, you will be trading options on US equities. Okay, and then I will not let you trade the spot. You will have to trade only options. Okay, here you cannot trade anything else. You have to trade only the spot. So the important thing to understand here is that the learning here is that these are all instruments. You may hear these terms being thrown around. Okay, sometimes you'll see people saying uh, equities, debt, futures, and options. You'll see some. There are actually books where they have this kind of classification. This is not correct actually, because these are equities and debt are asset classes and futures and options are instruments. So you should not be mixing the two, all right? It's like saying, you know, Germans, Japanese, doctors and engineers. So some of the <laughs> doctors will be German, some of the doctors will be Japanese. So you can't have a classification like that, okay? So understand that this, we can, uh, this is not correct classification. So uh, make sure you understand that point. Okay, so the third decision is instruments. Okay, how did we come to the instruments? Uh, so, so what instruments are we going to trade? Okay, everyone following so far? Yes, uh, let's ask uh, Kanika. Kanika, are you following? Yes, okay, all right, okay. Okay, so uh, third decision that we have to take is instruments and I have chosen the instrument for you. It is spot, okay? Now, again, as I said, it could be instruments. In this case, I've given you only one instrument type. You, you can also decide that I will trade spot and options. That is your choice. But it's a decision that has to be made. Right. Now, coming back to the question that um, Sachin was asking, which is uh, how did I, uh, those are equities. And then, of course, then I clarify, I further added to that question. How did we come up with that uh, classification? How did I come up with these three stocks only in um in the case of uh, consumer uh, the communication services or, or basic materials. Okay, so here we have some considerations of uh, now these three basic decisions. Okay, DP1, DP2, and DP3. Let me reduce the. Uh, I think you can still read uh, if we have we have the three DPs, and I will uh, reduce the space in between so you can see everything in one. Uh, Okay, I'll just leave it here. I'll put the heat map as a... Okay, Google Docs is very good when it comes to all these things, you know. Their, their handling of hyperlinks and all is really good. It's much better than OneDrive. So anyway, okay. Uh, so DP1, 2 and 3. 
Now, normally when we decide, decide these things, there's a, there are consider how do we decide, how do I take these kind of decisions? There are usually considerations of expertise, okay? So if you go back to this initial question, now Sambhavna and uh, Rag and others who had answered that question, okay? Uh, where I think Harsh also answered that question. They may think about their expertise. Now they may decide that, let's say they are a team, they may decide that, okay, we don't know much about commodities. We don't know much about currencies, but we understand equity markets very well. So that's one of the reasons they might have chosen equities. All right. So this is decided by, uh, you know, questions of competence, but there are also a question of uh, DP1 to DP3. Okay. The kind of considerations that lead us to the decisions, one is expertise and the other is liquidity is a major consideration okay we want to be talking about liquidity and uh, you know free uh, very liquid stocks everybody understands what liquidity is okay i'll just try to quickly explain today because i want to make sure i show you the stock screener liquidity basically means just actively traded stocks okay liquidity means ability to transact large volumes in a market spelling mistakes may be there um, without um, significantly impacting the price okay right now you understand that whenever you deal in a market you can impact the price if your trading volume is very large okay let's say there are very few empty houses available for sale in Pigampura and some big shot investor comes in from abroad and wants to say, I want to buy like, you know, 20 houses in Pithampura. There are 20, maybe there are only 21 houses available. So obviously this will have an impact on the price. If you have a large bulk order for that kind of quantity, which is so disproportionately large, right? It will start moving the prices up. Is everyone clear about that? Okay. You understand? So the idea is if you have a very liquid market, the idea is that essentially you can transact large volumes in a market without uh, there should be high liquidity, low liquidity or, uh, or a high or good liquidity. We have given the definition is if you have good liquidity in a market, then you can transact large volumes without significantly impacting the price. So these things are important because um, large volumes, keywords here. impact on the price okay all right okay so this is the understanding of liquidity that if it's a very deep and liquid market uh, then you will be able to trade large volumes in that market and it will not have an impact on the price that's basically what it means okay so with a view on this what we do is how did i come up with uh, because i see that it there are 234 stocks in basic materials i can't give you so many stocks this is where I use a stock screener. Okay, this stock screener, this is over 50. I hope it's working. I will give you the under 50. Okay, and I hope it will work. Okay, total of 92. Yeah, okay. So, what did I do here? I may overshoot by a few minutes, but just bear with me, guys. I, I will not overshoot too much. Okay, all right. So, what do I do? So, remember, my consideration is always this liquidity. I want to be trading only in liquid stocks. I don't want to be trading in some uh, low price stock, not very liquid, which is subject to market manipulation. This is another factor. Market manipulation is less in liquid stocks. Okay. So what do I do? I set up a stock screener. We'll discuss a stock screener later. A stock screener is just basically like a filter. Think of it like a filter. So suddenly I come into the webs campus and I see, oh my God, there are like 6,000 students. I can't handle so many people at the same time. Now I say, okay, uh, show me only the male students. Immediately what I've done is I have cut out almost half the population. So I have made my problem simpler. Now, even male students, let's say there are 3,000 male students. I can't handle so many students. Okay. Show me all the students who are more than six feet tall. Now, already I've done a further classification. Some students will go out. Maybe there'll be only a thousand students left. Now, I want to do a further cutoff. I say only out of the students who are more than male students who are more than six feet tall, show me only the ones wearing glasses. So you see how by applying filters, I'm 
continuously cutting down the sample size. Are you able to follow that? Yes, Ketan? Mr. Photographer, are you with us? Yes, yes sir, I am following. Okay, you are the official photographer. I hope you don't mind if I call you <laughs> Mr. Photographer. I am very liberal with no, no, uh, you know, pulling the legs of students, so I hope nobody gets offended. Okay? No, sir, it's, it's fine. fine. Okay, so have you understood, Ketan, how we are using a filter to cut the sample size? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, good. So this is all that a stock screener is. What did I do? I went to the stock screener. You play with it yourself. Okay, I've given you the link. I think I'll just give you the link here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question, sir. Yes, okay. I, I'll just... Uh, who is this? Sir Siddharth. Siddharth. Just wait, Siddharth. I have, I'm running out of time. I want to just quickly show this once and then you can stay back. I'll answer your question. Okay? I'll release okay. the other students. Okay? So... Uh, what did I do? I can't handle so many stocks. Uh, okay, this 92 has come with after applying my filters. So uh, before if I did not apply my, the yellow ones are the filters. So what did I do? I said I want only large cap, which means you remember uh, Rag was mentioning large cap, mid cap. So here they have a definition of make sure you are clear about your definition. I said show me only 10 billion to 200 billion market cap. Okay, figure out what market cap is. You can read the definitions here. Okay. So that is already a filter, okay? Then I said, I want average volume. Any old volume will not do. I want over 2 million, okay? Average volume must be over 2 million. This I think is over one month or so, or three months or so. Then I want current volume also over 2 million. You see how I'm trying to attack liquidity, okay? Uh, I'm just at the time. I will just uh, release you within a couple of minutes, okay? I, you already understood that idea of a filter. I gave you the example of WIP students. I keep applying filters and I keep cutting the sample size. So I applied one filter, second filter, third filter. Country, I only want USA. Okay. Optionable, shortable, we'll discuss later on. These are generally, they all tend to be liquid stocks. Price under $50 because you have only $1 million. Each stock is $100. Uh, 100 stocks, minimum lot size. Okay. So if you buy any stock, you will have to pay 100 times that price, okay? Here the price is uh, Avantar is 22.17. If you buy Avantar, market lot is 100 shares, so you'll have to pay 22.17 into 100. So that's why I chose, I've chosen prices under $50 so that you can actually trade uh, decent amounts with your $1 million capital uh, available to you, okay? All right, now I will release the class because I'm already one minute over, but uh, just stay there, guys, to, before I take the attendance download, or I think I can still get the attendance download. Uh, maybe you can leave. Okay. Uh, so this is what it is. Okay. So if you come back to that point, how did I come at that? Now you see here, there are only uh, three uh, basic material stocks. Okay. And one of them has gone out now, but I've given you that stock list. Okay. So this Dow, Freeport, Mark Macfaran, it came from there. Okay. Newcore has stepped out. Newcore is a steel company, but you can still keep it. It's a big cap steel company. So this is how I came up with this list. Okay. You can see it. You can do it yourself. I think now you've learned something today. Okay, I'll just take the attendance list. What is all this you are recording? Fine, dismiss it. Windows quiet hours. Uh, you won't get notification. Okay, fine. Let me just see. Um, I'll just try to see if I get download attendance list. I'll just download the attendance list. And I have not held you back more than... Uh, I think you guys can leave now. I downloaded the attendance sheet. Okay, I think you guys can go now. I don't like to hold you back because you have to come back again after 15 minutes. For another. Okay, guys, you can go now. And Siddharth, you can stay back and ask your question. I will keep the recording on. Yes, Siddharth. Uh, yes, sir. My question was that uh, when we're talking about liquidity in the markets, yeah. so, sir, uh, does it mean that uh, there will be a less uh, bid ask spread? And does it mean that the volatility of the prices will also be less? Uh, okay. All the yeah, stocks. stocks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, bid ask spread and volatility. Okay. Yeah. So, answer to your questions, short answer to your question. Well, this is definitely low. Okay. In fact, this is almost a, uh, it's like almost uh, 
I'm not trying to make fun of your question, but I'm just showing you how it is tautological by definition almost. That if you are asking, does a person with, uh, is a 80 year old person who is not wearing glasses, does he have good eyesight? Answer is definitely yes. Okay. In this case, so we define good liquidity by the bid offer spread. If the bid offer spread is low, then that we, that's when we say that the liquidity is very good in this market. All right. So the answer to this question is definitely low bid ask spread if you have high good liquidity. Then high good liquidity as far as volatility is concerned, uh, this is uh, generally, I will not give a categorical answer like the first one, generally lower, okay, but this is not guaranteed. You can have markets which have very good liquidity, which have high, and also remember that volatility itself keeps on changing for any given market. All right, uh, for any given market, market will itself keep changing. Okay, All right. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, yes, Siddharth, does it make sense? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Let me give yes, you sir. one more example. This uh, You understood my point about why uh, uh, volatility itself will keep changing. If you see, this is actually we are anticipating, uh, we are anticipating our uh, FTRM project actually. I'm trying to look up this, uh, yeah, let's look at this. Uh, I'll give you one link just to understand that um, we'll just take any stock. So there are very way, many ways to measure volatility. Uh, let's look at uh, where we have um, um, a historical volatility, volatility calculation. Okay, we can look at this. We have this QQQ, right? Let me see here. I was just trying to look at something else where we have, uh, you see if we have uh, H E F G H historical volatility. All right. Okay. Let me stop this. Yeah. Just historical volatility. You can see this is the measure of volatility for this market, which is Q Q Q. This is an ETF. This is an ETF which tracks the Nasdaq 100 index. Okay. So you can use it to proxy the Nasdaq 100 index. A very good proxy, almost 100% accurate. So if you see okay. the NASDAQ 100 index ETF, the historical volatility, 10 day historical volatility of the NASDAQ 100 index to illustrate your point that understand that volatility itself is a, we should not talk about it in general terms. Uh, we should be very careful about talking about it in general terms because you can see it, it's volatility itself is changing. Is this clear Siddharth? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. yes sir. So those are the two answers to your questions. Anything else? Your answer is, uh, you got the answer. No, sir, I asked this, I asked this about volatility because uh, we want uh, more volatility because we want to pocket more profits. But then if there would be high liquidity, but then I got the answer that uh, volatility is different. So I was thinking that volatility, yeah, volatility remains itself very can change. Volatility itself can change. And then there are certain things like generally you will find that commodities and equities have the highest volatility. Debt has historically has very low, especially government debt, has very low volatility. Generally, if you're looking at government debt only, this will have the lowest volatility of all the asset classes. After that, generally, will be currencies. After that, generally, there'll be a mix of individual equities and commodity. These are very volatile. Okay. But even within a particular class, uh, a particular market, a one particular market, which is the market for QQQ ETF. Even in that market, volatility itself is a changing factor. So you cannot even talk about it in general terms unless you're very careful because you have to also make sure that you understand that this itself is changing. Okay? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, so if you look at average historical volatility of NASDAQ equity, this is an equity essentially, okay? This is an ETF, but it's a basket of equities. So if you change this now, if you make this, let's say, uh, Amazon, now we are not talking about a basket of stocks. We're talking about one stock, okay? Now this one stock has even higher volatility because it's an individual stock, it's not a basket. Okay. Now you see how volatility of Amazon stock, you see that also is changing. It goes from 50 to 10 
then goes up again to 50, comes back to 10, goes up to 50. Can you see that? So this itself yes, also is um, is a changing factor, volatility itself. But if you do an average of Amazon volatility, it will be higher than QQQ. It will be higher than currencies. Okay, if you do Euro USD, it will be higher than currencies. You see, currency volatility is much lower. Okay, so as yes, a general yes. class, but even currency volatility is changing. Even Euro USD is so all volatility for all markets is constantly changing. Right? Is this clear? So answer yes. to your question. I understand your problem. I understand your problem, but the difference is that. Uh, you can still make money in markets which are very liquid and have low volatility like currencies. Okay, all, all you are going to do is you are going to be able to trade much. Remember, this is because it's very liquid. You can trade much larger volumes. Okay, where did I go? Ha, liquidity is to trade large volumes. So in, in liquid markets, you can trade very large volumes. And you can still make money by trading larger volumes even though the volatility is lower. This is clear. So yes, sir. The question that, sir, is, sir. The question uh, that uh, arose I, in my, I, I, my yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I tried trading the currency. The bid ask spread was extremely low, and because it was, I think, trading for 24 hours a day. Whenever I opened the TWS, it was trading. Yeah. So I guess that's why it's very liquid. The currency market. Yeah. But okay, guys, one more thing. Please be careful. Don't run down your <laughs> when you experiment with your TWS. Make sure you don't lose too much money because your then investable capital will run down. You have been given one million dollars, so uh, make sure you don't. Uh, if you do some trades, you do it mentally. And yes, sir. Yeah, it, my trades by the risk yeah, I am yeah. taking, so yeah. it, it remains. If you're practicing, uh, if you're practicing data order entry and all, do it, but then quickly rewind what you unwind what you did, so that you don't lose too much money. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Clear. Okay. So, Siddharth, is, uh, your answer is ans question is answered? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, we'll dismiss the class now. Anybody has any other question? Sir, sir, sir I, may, I, may, I want to add a few points regarding volatility. I want to know if I am right or wrong. Yeah. Sir, uh, isn't uh, the volatility uh, depends upon, like you said, uh, the type of uh, commodity we are investing in? Uh, we can even spread the volatility of our own portfolio by uh, mixing the commodities yeah so in fact generally that is what you're talking about essentially what you're talking about is the diversification of your um, okay you what you were talking about actually i think is reducing the volatility of your uh, yes sir okay overall uh, volatility can be reduced like diversifying yeah. our commodities yeah and uh, by mixing i'll put it this way by mixing asset classes and markets yes sir. Right? yes sir okay so in this case like when you look at the qqq it has uh, when we showed you the qqq it has lower volatility yes, because it's a basket of stocks okay so there yes, you are reducing sir. the volatility it is correct this is basically the argument of diversification okay yes sir yes sir okay although i would uh, caution you <laughs> that many people like warren buffett i also don't believe in this diversification business Many leading, many well-known equity investors like Warren Buffett, Jim Rogers, they consider this to be all garbage, this diversification. Okay. So, but you should understand the diversification argument as a beginning finance student. You should understand the argument and I'm also giving you a second level uh, insight on this topic that you are absolutely correct that you can reduce the volatility of portfolio by of the portfolio. We are not writing perfect English here. Okay. Uh, by mixing asset classes, and mixing markets, okay, mixing asset classes and mixing markets, okay. But what is the proviso here? Please understand. What is the assumption here? Provided if all my markets have, remember correlation, regression, correlation, remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if all my markets are perfectly correlated with one another, will I get any diversification benefit? No, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, so sir. provided correlation between portfolio component markets, okay? 
that means uh, the markets which constitute your portfolio remember each yes, uh, yes. asset is like a market because you are trading it against our, our money okay, usually so correlation between portfolio component markets should be less than okay. one okay if correlation is one okay. then you get you can add 5000 stocks in your portfolio but if they're all one correlated there is no benefit uh, yes sir there, there will be no benefit yeah so remember that this this is based on the critical assumption that the correlation is less not is less than one so is there a good uh, ratio for this also because when i calculated it came out to be between 0. 0.15 to 0. 0.2 or 3 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3 which, which, which ratio uh, sir correlation between different components no, again, see, the correlation between portfolio component markets also is, uh, remember, this thing also varies depending on your look back period. Okay. So, when you, you remember when you calculated beta in your FM1 or FM2, whatever. Yes. Sir. Now, if you did your yes, beta, sir, yes, sir. if you did your beta calculation using one year of historical data, versus if you did it using five years of data or you use ten years of data, the results are generally different. Yes. Yes. Sir. Markets are the same, but because you change your you changed your look back period, the result the data set essentially you're changing the data set the size of the data set, and the num and the number is changing. Is that you remember that? Yes. So similarly, uh, correlation uh, between the portfolio component, if you look at correlation between say five currencies, okay, you look at correlation matrix between five currencies. If you change the component period, uh, the, if you change the look back period, the correlation numbers will change. All right. Okay. okay. Is this clear? So yes, correlation sir. also is something where it will change. Okay. Volatility also changes. Uh, okay, volatility also changes. Correlation also changes over time. So when you talk about these things, you have to be very specific. I'm trying to find the Wanda um, FX Labs uh, correlation. There is a very good correlation applet where you can easily see that. Um, uh, you can see the easily see that the correlation, but you already know this because you have seen it from your, and it applies to your beta calculation also. All right, that yes, uh, yes, sir. your any time you do uh, any kind of uh, uh, correlation analysis, volatility analysis, beta analysis, beta calculation, if you change the look back period, it will change the number. Okay, so you have to be cognizant of this. Okay. Yes, Utsav, does it answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. So we can. Uh, I think you're already late for your next class, or you guys have no class now. Sir, it will start at uh, one thirty. We have that long, long break today. Oh, you have. Oh, this is the lunch break. Okay, good. I can also yes, yes. go for my uh, lunch break then. Okay. All right. Take care then. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. No other question. Okay. All right. Okay. Take care. Okay.